uh, transaction really, I, I think, kind of made things. And it's not just, I, I think, the reaction that we're getting from from people. I mean, I feel like all that stuff with the, the complaining about the 54% and all that has kind of gone away. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at the lineup going, okay, you look at other lineups around around the league, you know, yeah, they look pretty good. There's some ifs in there. I mean, I feel like they need to especially get something out of the, the DH spot, which they haven't in a while. And then I think a lot of it depends on Ty France and, and how, you know, how he's working. And there's a couple of videos out there, by the way, of some of the works that uh, work workouts that he was doing um, as far as uh, at driveline. So looks like he's working his tail off. So, yeah, now all of a sudden you look at it and you can kind of make a case like, OK, I feel pretty good about this lineup. Yeah, we, we talked about it. Shannon said in for the first two hours yesterday, and we were talking about, you know, the lineup and, and, and the big qualifier is if. It's just if healthy. That's yeah. You look at it on paper. You, lo- you look at uh, MLB.com, put out a, a big preview of each team's projected lineup and rotation, and this is what they had for the Mariners. So they have J.P. Crawford leading off. They have Julio hitting second. They've got Polanco hitting third. Mitch Garver is your DH hitting fourth. Cal Raleigh fifth Ty France hitting sixth and then you've got the the platoon of Dominic Canzone Luke Rayleigh in left field at seven Mitch Hanniger hitting at eight and then the Luis Sirius uh Josh Rojas uh combo there at third base hitting ninth so you look at it on paper and you go okay that looks pretty good if everybody's healthy yeah the problem is you've got Polanco you've got Barber you've got Hanniger all with varying levels of injury concern well the other thing too the other if i think is you know jp crawford if it's last year jp not the year before that and then with ty france not last year and hopefully you know two three years uh ago how he was hitting so yeah it's uh this all of a sudden is starting to make me feel pretty good not wild about you know seven and nine just because you know you've got the platoon situation going there but I think, like I said, I think it depends a lot on Mitch Garver and how much you get out of your DH this year. But, yeah, looks looks pretty good. I think I don't hear people complaining as much either. Well, <laughs> oh, they're there. If you See, you say this, and now you're going to get everybody I texting in with complaints, for, Dave. Yeah. Uh, I don't look hard for the, the complainers. Yeah, they're, they're, they're there. Don't, don't, don't uh, get that twisted. They are certainly there. And you guys are welcome to text in and complain if that's what you want to do. Now, but, they're gonna, now everybody's going to text in. Yeah, they're on Twitter. They're, out, they're still out there going, oh, yeah, well, this guy's broken down. And how much can you actually get from Mitch, Mitch Hanniger? And blah, you know, so it, and some of it's fair. I mean, you know, unfortunately, it's been the story with Mitch Hanniger. He's just had these crazy injuries that have really derailed his seasons. We've seen what he looks like when he is healthy, 39 home runs, 100 runs driven in. I don't expect that of him. I just don't know that he can be that durable. But if you can get a hundred games, I don't know if that's asking too much or too little of Mitch Hanniger. I feel like that's kind of kind of the same thing for Mitch Garver as well. Just get, be out there for a hundred games. Give me that. Polanco, same thing. I think you're going to see a better looking lineup on paper, certainly than than they went into last season with. Was not happy at all with Colton Wong and and Listella and Pollock and all that. So this. This has much more of a, I don't know, it feels more realistic to be optimistic. It didn't feel realistic to be optimistic last year, Mm -hmm. looking at that lineup. Now I look at it and go, okay, I I get the optimism. It makes sense to me to feel optimistic about this group, but there is the big caveat, health. Now the rotation is is exactly what you think. Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Logan Gill, Bryce Miller, Brian Wu. Um, Feel great about that. Again, as long as they're healthy pitching, you never know. We saw two extremes the past two seasons. Season before last, not a start was missed. Mm-hmm. Last year, everybody got hurt. It felt like at one point or another, whether it was Robbie Ray done for the season, Marco done for the season, you know, guys taking turns, uh, Bryce Miller, what blister on his on his fingers. I mean, just different things kept them out from making a start. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But on paper, I feel more optimistic about this team. I'm curious for Mariner fans, do you, are you feeling more optimistic, or do you look at this and go, eh? It's a bunch of guys that, that are being taped together or no, this is, you know, considering the constraints financially that were placed on Jerry and Justin, I like what they did here. You know, that's out of their hands. We talked a bit about that yesterday as well, Dave, that off of the anger is directed at Jerry, and I get it. He's the guy that you're hearing from. He's the guy that's up there in front of the mic trying to tell you everything's going to be okay, and we love what we've done here. But this year they kind of they kind of got the rug pulled out from them a bit. You know they they thought they were going to be able to increase the payroll, and instead they had to shrink it a bit based on 
projected revenues from Comcast and this the deal with Xfinity or whatever the hell they're doing. So I, I think consider, taking that into consideration, I like what they've done. I'm, I'm going to have my fingers and toes crossed all season long praying for health. That, that'll be the key to the season without question. Yeah, I think that – and also um, uh, the article, you know, has pretty much everybody's lineup and rotation. And uh, other MLB cities are, are thinking the same thing. There's there's always a big if, you know, if yeah. this guy – and, you know, like Ty France, I mean, you know, that – I hate to keep dwelling on that one, but, you know, that that's kind of a big one. I mean, he, he really took a you know step back last year. So um, – yeah, I, th- I think every you look at every one of these lineups, whether it's the Orioles or the Yankees or whatever, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of what ifs, but you know I I feel like there's a lot to like um, as far as if you're being optimistic, and I I think it's it's probably one of those right in the middle as far as the the rest of Major League Baseball that it, you know if you've been negative for the last you know couple of years you're probably going to be you're probably going to be not too happy about it, and if you're positive then you're going to think hey this is uh, this this lineup's got a chance, but I don't know. Like I keep mentioning again, Ty France, but I, I believe in Ty France. I feel like he's a really hard worker. He's a he's a smart guy. He's a leader. And then you know, I saw a couple of the videos of him over at uh, Driveline doing mm-hmm. workouts and things like that. They've got him, you know, they've got like all these sensors on him, and he's taking swings, and you know, he's working his tail off for it. So um, yeah, th- I think those that that kind of epitomizes the the what if you know what if. He comes back and is, you know, the the same great hitter that he was that we've come to rely on. Yeah, he was. I mean, he would think about when he first got here. He played, you know, part of it was in the pandemic year, so he only he played twenty games with the Padres that year, twenty two with the Mariners. What was odd is he hit exactly three oh nine for both teams in twenty games with the Padres. He hit three oh nine and twenty two with the Mariners. He hit three oh nine. Uh, had a 371 on base with the Mariners, 377. Again, it's a total of 42 games. I get it. But the first full season with the Mariners, 368 on base, 445 slug, 291 average. Hit 18 home runs, drove in 73. I mean, he just looked like a guy who was going to be just rock solid. He wasn't overly, he doesn't have a ton of power, but he's got enough pop to be a threat. He hit the ball all over the field. You had to play him straight up because he used the entire field. He wasn't this dead pull hitter. He wasn't opposite field, everything. He was, he was just using the entire field. You just felt like he was the guy you looked at and go, yeah, he's going to do something. He's going to make contact. You know, he's, he's a slow guy. He's not going to, you know, hustle out a double or anything, but he's a guy that's always going to make contact. And then he just got away from that. It felt like his strike zone got huge. He chased. It was just, he seemed like such a disciplined hitter up there, especially in 21 that he didn't chase. And, and that started to change 22. You still had 340 on base, 276, 20 home runs, but you started to see it a little bit there. And then certainly last year, just didn't go the right way, and it felt like he he just got way out of what made him such a productive, solid hitter. So hopefully they can correct whatever, if it's mechanics, if it's just his mental approach, whatever, whatever was going on. Hopefully they can correct that at driveline because we've seen we've seen it. He's capable. Yeah. We've seen it for a full season plus. So he's he's certainly capable. 